Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include Austria's freedom aims to enlarge Eurosceptic bloc. EU breaks off Ukraine talks and scolds Yanukovych. New is approved to head Eurozone bank supervision. Abandon the Euro, says Nobel Prize winning economist and warns of a lost generation on the dole. Plus, Van Rompuy torpedoes the SNP claims on EU membership. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage, a core of six Eurosceptic parties is aiming to win over another four right-wing parties to create a new political group in the EU Parliament, the leader of Austria's Freedom Party said. In the run-up to May's EU-wide elections to the Parliament, momentum is building to create a group of nationalist parties which would entitle members to more office space and support staff, as well as EU funds for meetings and publicity. Now, as I said yesterday in the first programme of the new year, the people in Britain and indeed across Europe are waking up to the fact that things are simply not as they first appear. More and more people are realising that the EU is a totalitarian machine that bears the imprint of the last multinational corporation that sat on it. It cares not one jot for the thoughts and opinions of the people. I have a saying, people always tell you what they are not interesting that Manuel Barroso spends so much of his time shouting more democracy, more freedom. The European Union on Sunday broke off talks with the Ukraine on the far-reaching trade deal that protesters here have been demanding for weeks and a top official issued a stinging, angry statement all but accusing Ukraine's president of dissembling. The bloc's enlargement chief, Stefan Fuhl, wrote on Twitter that the words and actions of President Viktor Yanukovych were growing further and further apart, even as the Ukrainian crisis was showing signs of deepening. On Sunday, about 100,000 protesters clogged a main plaza and surrounding streets, rivaling earlier weekend rallies in size. Now, today, The Guardian is reporting that we should welcome Ukraine into the EU and restore faith in the European project. <laughs> nice one. I'll tell that to the poor folks in Greece, Spain and Portugal. Know that just as soon as the Ukrainian president hands over sovereignty of his country to the EU, their troubles will be over. The population of the Ukraine is 45 million people. And I find it fascinating that the Western press is so focused on the protesters. 100,000 protesters constitutes 0.2% of the population. It matters not how much they burn and smash up Kiev, they still represent a minority group. Now, from our standpoint, we feel that their president is doing them a favour by retaining their sovereign rights to self-determination. Of course, the picture is completely different from Russia, who have also been looking to draw the Ukraine into the Eurasian Union. All these unions of different countries, transatlantic and transpacific partnerships, <laughs> anyone would think there was some sort of agenda for a new world order. European lawmakers approved the appointment of Danielle New as the Eurozone's top banking supervisor on Wednesday, a new role charged with overseeing the biggest financial institutions in the currency bloc and leading a clean-up of the region's financial sector. At a full meeting of the European Parliament in Strasbourg, lawmakers overwhelmingly backed Miss New, currently head of France's banking regulator, to take the helm of the so-called single supervisory mechanism, which will be housed at the European Central Bank in Frankfurt. Now, there is much trouble in the financial world of Europe. There are two fundamentally unresolved problems. The overinflated equities markets, which have been pumped up through quantitative easing, which frankly is the more obvious one, and the deeper issue, and probably the most critical, is that the populations across Europe, and especially here in Britain, are carrying huge debt. This has been fuelled by so-called HELOC, or Home Equity Line of Credit. Problem one will impact back on governments, squeezing bond yields and forcing up interest rates. 
Problem two will hit the people. As the interest rates rise, so their mortgage costs rocket upwards. It's a complex problem. Good luck with that one, Danielle. One of the world's leading economists will today admit he was wrong to back the creation of the euro and call for it to be dismantled. Sir Christopher Pissarides, who won the Nobel Prize for Economics in 2010, was once a passionate believer in the benefits of the single currency. But, in an extraordinary change of heart, today he will warn that the euro is creating a lost generation of unemployed youngsters and is dividing Europe. The Cypriot British economist will call for actions to restore the euro's credibility in international markets and to restore the trust that Europe's nations once had in each other. But in a lecture at the London School of Economics where he teaches, he will add, regretfully, I do not see either materialising. Until we take a long hard look at the banking systems of the world and really understand how these systems operate, then I fail to see how this problem will ever get resolved. There is one shining example that is worthy of so much more investigation, and that is Iceland. One. The SNP's plans to fast-track an independent Scotland's EU membership have become untenable. It has been claimed after the President of the European Council said new states would have to apply in the usual way. Herman von Rompuy said a newly independent state breaking away from an existing EU member would be classed as a third country and would have to apply using the known accession procedures. He was responding to the announcement of an independent referendum in Catalonia. Labour and Conservative MSPs said his comments blew away SNP proposals to fast-track an independent Scotland's EU membership, but the Scottish Government insisted that the remarks did not apply to Scotland. <laughs> oh, can we and boil your heed? These remarks do not apply to Scotland. <laughs> Talk about handing a wet fish back as a response. Of course they apply to Scotland, you imbeciles. That is what the man said. Anyway... That might well be in the better interest of Scotland. If the Scottish people are being asked to vote on independence, then that had better be what it is. True and dignified independence, not a flying leap from the frying pan into the fiery bowels of Brussels. Also discovered in the European columns of The Guardian today is this rather cool interactive map. Now, the map highlights what each government is spending on its aid programmes, where it is spending that money, along with how well documented their spending programmes are. Now, interestingly, the top spender on aid for 2012 was the UK, with some $13.7 billion given away in aid, closely followed by Germany and then France, with $13.1 billion and $12.1 billion, respectively. So here we are, folks, with underfunding in the NHS, education and other public services, Georgie Porgy stuck with his hand in the pensions cookie jar, a national debt problem which is spiralling skyward, our political kleptocrats have lost the plot. UK can't even wipe its own face, and yet it's standing head and shoulders above the rest, waving a wad of sterling in the air. Check the map out for yourself. The links are below. Well... What an interesting and eventful opening to the year. I will be out speaking to a group of business leaders on Friday morning. And if you're in business and would like to come along to do some networking and discover more about the European Union, then drop us a line as soon as you can and I'll help organise that for you. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. <laughs>